All right, but let's move into the next segment, and that's 11 through 20. We're going to try to hit every single team, at least give you some explanation on why these guys. That's what been one of the guys, your guys' complaints with these mock drafts is we uh, give the picks, but we don't talk about it fully. Constructive criticism. Yeah, so we're going to try to at least talk about some of these picks and why these teams would be doing it. Uh, so, Ricky, try it out. 11 through 20. Well, you know, the Lakers at 11. I have Tyler Hero, and the reason why I have Tyler Hero is because usually I've had center here, but I'm thinking you need shooting. To go with LeBron, Tyler Hero, there you are. Um, then the Hornets at 12, Romeo Langford. It's mainly because I'm not reaching for a point guard here, even if I think Kemba's walking. And Romeo Langford, we need a two guard, best two guard, maybe BPA, right here at 12. Then the Heat, Seku. I've always loved Seku's fit with the Heat the last couple of drafts. That's where I've kind of lined him up. Then probably the lowest I've had him, and I'll be honest, the coin flip made him fall in my mock because he was in the top 10 before coin flips. Um, Rui Hachimura going to the Celtics. The Celtics can take him at 14. All they need is wings, point guard, and a center with their four picks. So they go at Rui at All they need is 14. A whole team. Yeah, but, well, they could basically. They already have so many guys on the roster. <laughs> That's what I'm looking. Center and point guard are needs, and then, hey, let's just take two wangs um, that we can get. Then the Pistons, Kevin Porter Jr. adding some shooting guard help um, and some scoring and maybe could turn into a number one scorer for them. Then the Magic going to Kale Alexander Walker, adding some scoring at the guard position. Then the Nets, P.J. Washington, phenomenal tournament. Wanted him to rise a little bit more but couldn't find a team that might have went after him with the uh, front courts that they have. So he'll go to the Nets that could use a power forward desperately. Then Keldon Johnson, to the Pacers, if he is here, then rumor is he would go back to school. Potentially, is what you were saying. There, there, there's some rumor out there if he doesn't get a lotto guarantee. Mm-hmm. I don't know how close on the lotto to you know just outside the lotto he is, but he yeah. is looking for that guarantee pretty mm-hmm. early. What Which, if it, but I mean, what if you get a guarantee and you're still not picked? Like, well, then you're true. Screwed. I yeah. mean, uh-huh. guarantees that's, though. That's what that's you got to take the risk. Deals and we'll see. I, I think he's probably staying out regardless. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't see him coming back, even though I think it would benefit him. But the Pacers, I'm just going BPA there with Keldon Johnson. Then the Spurs going with their. They're either going three or five. Here they'll go with the three. My boy Lewis King, quack quack Oregon Ducks. And then the C's, the Celtics, they are going to go with Jackson Hayes, pick up their center at 20 via the Clippers. Nice. All right, Dave, 11 through 20. All right, at number 11, I do have the Lakers going with Cam Reddish. This is basically just a pick because potential. He's still on the board. He's still on the board. He's like Brandon Ingram, but two years later. Jesus. Um, (laughs) No, Brandon Ingram had so much more. Yeah, with labor. Cam Reddish has potential, but I've passed him over enough times. I thought I was going to be cruel and give him to the Timberwolves just as like an ironic joke that I can't have another. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I like another no. one. The Lakers, the Lakers actually could work with him. So I like the idea of Cam Rush on that team. Hornets, I'm going to Kale Alexander Walker. He had an amazing time in the tournament. I absolutely loved his play. I think this team adds in another guard. Uh, he can go one or two depending on the Kemba situation. And I think he can actually be a great one guard because they've got a lot of scoring talent at the two and the three. So. I like his fit on that team. The Heat, Sekou Demboya, Workout Warriors. Like I, I, The one thing about Euro players when they come over to the U.S., a lot of it is conditioning. They've mm-hmm. been playing basically year-round, and they haven't had a chance to actually build up their bodies physically. Sekou Demboya is a guy with a body, but imagine how well he can get down. Like They do this whole like body fat camp, basically, with the Heat. Their conditioning is amazing. I think that's a perfect fit for him. Goes in there and can build himself up. Celtics taking Kevin Porter Jr., Kid's got, you know, incredible upside, but also is kind of a little bit of a knucklehead, so it's a risky pick. What? You gotta say it like Charles. You gotta say it like Charles. A little knucklehead. A little knucklehead. (laughs) Um, But again, when you watch his highlights, you're like, oh, this kid's like gonna be a top five pick, guarantee. Mm. And then you watch like his whole game, like, where where'd he go? Why is he not like what what is going on? Is this his some of it's his choice, some of it's his coach's choice to remove him from the system. For Benny Boatwright, which is weird, but college coaches want to win college games. Go figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving along, Pistons taking in Romeo Langford. I really like Luke Kennard, but I think Romeo Langford Kennard. adds additional depth at at the scoring guard position and can be a dangerous shooter at the NBA level. The Magic at 16 taking Tyler Hero. Again, looking for another shooting guard. Adding depth, this kid was a lights-out shooter in college. Came up pretty clutch for them. Uh, going to the next level, he'll definitely be the fill-in for Evan Fournier as he moves along. 
at number 17, and that's taking P.J. Washington, one of the best fours on the board, can stretch it out. That second year in college really helped him out a ton. He went way up the board, so I love the fit here. He adds space, gives this Nets team, who already doing some special stuff, mm-hmm. another piece to move forward with. Pacers taking Rui Hachimura. I love this fit. I think he is the ideal guy to help this team out because if they roll him out as a small ball three or as a four off the bench, he can take the ball in his hands. He can drive to the hoop. Absolutely looks great for that system. Casey Akpala going to the Spurs. Intriguing prospect. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he will be, but they've got time and they've got the right coach and the right coaching staff to help build him out because ball in his hands, he's an intriguing prospect. His shot's kind of questionable at times, but there's something about him where I think he's worth a stab at 19. Yeah, and they don't have a lot of wings on that team I mean, outside of Rike. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, and he's, his contract's going to be up, so yeah. you don't know what they're going to move or what pieces they're going to have to go with during free agency after this. And then at 20, the Celtics, I got them going Goga at a center. He's been absolutely fantastic as of late in international play. Looks aggressive around the hoop, and I like his rebounding game, so I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking right. forward to it. I'll jump in. Now, 11, I have the Lakers taking my favorite player, Bull Bull, out of Oregon. Uh, what? Look, looking at it, I think that this team needs something. <laughs> you could just stop there. It's the Lakers. They need something. Yeah. It's I don't a- know. I think he's 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 an interesting prospect. Yeah. And he might be injured. He might get injured again. He's, he's going to be at a higher injury risk. But he won't need to be a very high-usage player. He will be a guy that will be playing off ball a lot. And when you're playing next to LeBron James, and if he has a 7-3 who can shoot from the outside, you're going to be getting open looks from LeBron James, and you're going to have that extra length as well. Sean, what's my favorite play in NBA? Is it the trailing three? It is the trailing three. Because it's the trailing three. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and LeBron James runs that. fast breaks like nobody's business. Mm-hmm. So opportunities galore. And I just think it's kind of with the Cam Reddish thing. It's like, He's got the most potential, so just yeah. take him. Yep. Uh, and that, that was that's my th- think thinking with Bull Bull there for the Lakers. I don't know what what's going on. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the Hornets taking PJ Washington. I think they need shooting. I don't really. I'm not wor- too worried about Kemba leaving. I think he's going to stay. And I think that you need help uh, shooting uh, from the wing position. Nick Batum really didn't provide that too much uh, in a at least a volume standard. I think he had a he had a bounce back year this year. He had a decent um, year actually. Yeah. But but it wasn't something that. Uh, not, was, not up to his contract still, but yeah. that can't really help that. I mean, he only scored 9.3 points per game this year, uh, but he was shooting 38% from three. I think they need something more than that. If Batum's a bench player that can shoot 38% from three, that'd be nice, but I think you need a starter in P.J. Washington who could shoot much more efficiently from the outside and do much more than just shoot from the outside. Uh, so I, I like the Hornets taking P.J. Washington there. I have the Heat going with Nikki Alexander-Walker. They're running Justice Winslow at the point, and Winslow was not consistent as a point. Um Screw you, man. He, he wasn't was consistent. Great. He wasn't bad. He wasn't consistent. That's be- it's the best Justice Winslow we've seen to the date. Agreed, but he wasn't consistent. That's that's what I'll say. Um, and I think that, you know, having Nikki Alexander Walker, who isn't just a true one, he's more of a one two, mm-hmm. would be a nice fit there. And Goran Dragic does have a player option that most likely he's going to accept, but next year he won't be yeah. uh, on the team. And I think Nikki Alexander Walker kind of fits the mold of a Heat player. Uh, very uh, uh, smart. He's very. Um, He's smart. He's he long. Fits a team pl- play. Yeah. He's long, um, and and I think he is very. He's not something wowing, but he's a good basketball player, and that's really. I mean, outside of Whiteside, uh, his athleticism, and outside of Bam, uh, him being an athletic freak, they really don't have a lot of athletic freaks, and I think Nicky Allen f- kind of fits just the the mold of a Miami Heat player. I mean, I James Johnson, but too. he's at the end of his career. That's true. Uh, <coughs> then fourteen, I have the uh, Celtics taking Sekou Demboya. Uh, they have so many options here. I think they're going to probably trade all three of these picks to get Anthony Davis. Um, but they're, if they're taking him, I think they'll go Seku Demboya. They can take a shot, and I think Seku Demboya is worth a top 10 pick. I think he does have that potential, um, but I think he'll probably be written off because he doesn't have that production overseas like a Luka Doncic Chad. And I think that the conditioning will be something that will worry some teams. He'll need some time. The Celtics can give him time. Uh, at 15, I have the Pistons taking Romeo Langford. Uh, very similar to your saying, you know, Kennard was fine. Um, but I think He exploded at the end of the year, but that if we can get more of that next year, he can be a starting shooting guard. You still need scoring. Yeah. Like it's, that, that team struggled. And the thing with Romeo, too, is Romeo will not be a day one player. He won't yeah. be a day one starter, and I think he needs time to develop. And being next to a guy who showed so much development throughout his career in Blake Griffin might be a very good leadership uh, opportunity for Romeo yeah. Lankford. Um, I really like Lankford as a player, really do, but he needs uh, some development and, and some time, and I think the Pistons can provide that because 
Kennard might not be a long-term play for them. Blake Griffin might not be a long-term play for them because he's not. I think he's what three more years left in that contract. Yeah, it's um, pretty long-term in NBA terms these days. But you know, <laughs> Romeo Langford is going to be like 22, 23 when yeah. that contract comes up. Um, and then looking at. The Magic, I think Evan Fournier, his contract's coming up soon. They need shooting as well, just in general, just off the bench. Um, I think Tyler Harrow would be a good pick for them. At 17, I have the Nets going Rui Hachimura. Hachimura is a player that probably should go higher, um, but there's no fit that really stands out here. And the Nets are a team that can sh- well, has have shown the ability to mold players and get the most out They're of these great. players. Yeah. And I think Hachimura does need that. His shot selection is not good. He's not a natural shooter. He's not a natural scorer. He is a very natural athlete, though. He's a very natural uh, attacker of the basket. And I think that's something that can uh, really help the uh, help the um, Nets. Um, one thing that I think they don't have is a, a big that can attack the bucket. Um, Jared Allen kind of can, um, but I think Hachimura can provide some big offensive uh, production for them. A lot of their production does come from Karis LeVert, Spencer Didwitty, and D'Angelo Russell. Hachimura can bring some bigger offensive uh, um, production for them. Uh, then going to the Pacers, I have Nasir Little going. Um, clearly a highly ranked high school prospect, but has not been able to put it all together. Had some good, good games in the tournament, had a good game against Iona, um, but nothing consistent. And I think that the Pacers do get the most out of their players. And just the body that he has, the potential he has, I think it's something the Pacers really can't pass up. Um, Boyan might be gone. He might be you know, asking for too much. And Nasir Little might be able to step in uh, once he's fully developed to, to be that next three for them. Then going to the Spurs at 19, I have Kevin Porter Jr. going. Again, the potential is too much there. I know they have a lot of guards. Uh, Derek White there, uh, DeJounte Murray coming back. Um, but they still need a scorer at that position. Uh, Derek White kind of showed flashes there, but I don't think he's going to be ever like a 15-point per game scorer. Um, I think Kevin Porter Jr. can be that. I think he could be the offensive uh, help to a DeJounte Murray. Do you and, think Lonnie Walker, where, where do you see him in this team moving forward? Because we only got like a handful of minutes out of him at the end of the mm-hmm. year. But yeah, he I, was I injured, know. played in the G League a little bit. Do you see him being uh, one of the guys who, like, two years from now is one of their main scorers, or do you think that he's more of a role player on this team? I know I it's, like, it's so early to call. Yeah, That's the problem. I liked him a lot coming out. Yeah. And then he just kind of left the site, and it's not like I've been missing him, mm-hmm. you know? So I don't know exactly what to get from Alani yeah. Walker. And... I think Kevin Porter Jr. could be in a very similar mold to Lonnie Walker, so that could be a reason why you don't take him. But they're still losing, possibly, Rudy Gay this year. And I think they need to get a lot of offensive help. And I think a big thing is clearly Pop doesn't like shooting from the outside. Uh, and he doesn't like you know using modern-day NBA styles. Um, and I think that Kevin Porter, if he hits... like I think, I think what it is is pretty much... Him and Lonnie Walker and Kevin Porter are very similar players. Both of them won't hit though. Okay. Do you think? And if you one two of them ping hits, pong balls. Let's make one of them work, and yeah. we'll lock down the position. I, I wasn't. I was high on Lonnie Walker because I think he had potential. Um, he showed a lot of great stuff in the second half of his Miami career. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kevin Porter showed a lot of great stuff in his first half of his USC career. Yeah. Um, I just think that both guys need some time. Lonnie Walker obviously showed that as he wasn't called up from the G League right away. Um, I think both guys are just working project, projects and they both might not hit. Um, but I think Kevin Porter, at least potential-wise, is too much to pass up there. And then finally, 20, the Celtics taking Kelton Johnson Jr. Uh, Kelton Johnson, not Jr. Uh, Kelton Johnson. Uh, they're going to be losing possibly uh, Terry Rozier, possibly Kyrie Irving. Um, who else are they possibly losing? Marcus Morris. Um, and I think they're going to need at least with Rozier and Kyrie possibly leaving, they're going to need some guard help. Um, and losing Avery Bradley has hurt them, and I think that he might be able to fit a very similar role to what Avery Bradley was on this team, uh, a defensive guy, a uh, defensive guard who can shoot from the outside. Um, Kelton Johnson, we had him higher, and he's taken a fall just because he wasn't really consistent in Kentucky. And it's kind of a flip of Tyler Harrow. Tyler Harrow was just hot late, and yeah. that's why he rose. And, and, and Kelton Johnson cold late. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean... We can probably see a balancing act between him and Harrow yep. where you know they flip or they end up coming you know near each other. Uh, but I think Kelton Johnson, um, I was worried about his consistency, and I'm worried about what his true scoring nature would be in the NBA. Would he be a guy that just shoots from the outside or not? So uh, that's our 11 through 20. Uh, let's jump into some of these guys. Kelton Johnson is one of those guys that we wanted to talk about. Uh, let's talk about him getting cold. Ricky, we'll go to you because it's been a while since you talked. Mm-hmm. Um, let us know also what you think of this, this style. Um, it, I'm not a huge fan of it. 
uh, at least the way we did this, just because. My only thing, and this is just live on the podcast, is um, I do like the, because it's fair to every team, where it's like, yeah. hey, this is why I did it, hey, this is why I did it. We just don't want this to go way too long before we yeah, get Yeah, that's the thing. We're at right, 20 minutes. Yeah. So I, I feel like. I feel like it also took you out of the conversation too. Like it, you, oh, know, you, I, you I, started, and and for, then you know it's been twenty minutes. To for talk. next time, I feel like it would just be like I go through mine. This is why. This is why. This is why. Dave. This is why. This is why. This is why. Sean. This is why. This is why. This is why. That's what we would do for. But hey, trying new things out, we mm-hmm. adapt. Hey, we might even change things for next year. So it's like we're always adapting. We're always changing. We want the best product out there. Yeah, what do you think about Kelvin Johnson? With me, Kelvin Johnson, I honestly, he was one of the biggest questions for me because he fell so much for me. And I don't know. Here's the thing I hate, and I do, but I hate it, is you look at the tournament and the guy plays bad. You go, oh, he'll fall. But then immediately I go, look at the whole year. Like, March is not a, like, this is what this player is. You got to look at the entire year. And, of course, Guys grow, but it's like you have, like Jared Culver, he had a bad two games. Is that making him a bad player? No. For me, he's potentially still a top five pick. Yes, did he fall out of my top five? Yes, but it had nothing to do with just those two games. Kelton Johnson, I think, is the same way, where I hate that I'm doing it, but because of how he played late, it's affecting where he's going to go. Plus, it doesn't help that a guy like Rui falls in my mock draft, because if a guy like Rui falls... That means a guy like Kelton Johnson is also going to fall in a mock draft. I don't know if that's the same for everybody because you see, just to get mm-hmm. this right, you see Rui as a three and you see Kelton as a two. I so could like, So I see Rui as more of a three, but I could see how people see him as a four. Okay. Okay. I, just, I understand it, yeah. but I think that with his skills, I would have him more at the three. He's a three that has maybe some four height or size to him. Okay. Okay. <coughs> yeah, for me, I think... Kelton Johnson, you said it. You said it earlier, Sean. Wildly inconsistent games. Um, he goes from, of course, he can light up Albany Christian. Like no one cares about that, unfortunately mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. him. But at the same time, you look at the last three games: Wofford, Houston, Auburn. Disappointing performances in all three of them. Not awful, but just kind of disappointing. And I think that's the thing: is he was even subbed out of that Auburn game um, at, at a couple of key key moments because he did play 38 minutes out of the game. But there were several moments during that and Houston's game where it was like, Houston especially, I think, was one in my memory where he was like, dude, you are hurting your team right now. You need to be off the floor. Mm -hmm. Just stupid mistakes. And he's a player who absolutely has defensive aggression. He wants to go out there. He wants to do the best he can. And I think he does shine better as a defender. But from a scoring standpoint, he's not a great decision maker with his shots right now. And he needs to understand when he gets cold to not keep jacking up shots. Uh, I think part of the problem was the point guard play was toss up. So I think in the NBA, if he's a if he's just a guy, and he can go out there and defend and shoot threes, he can kind of fall into like maybe I don't want to compliment his KCP, but in a similar role, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that could work out well for him. I think him being a, a smaller role and not having to carry an offensive load works really well for him. That's why I like the Avery Bradley thing. Yeah, Avery Bradley going also Celtics, works really well, too. Um, just because they lost that player, and they really haven't gotten it back. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Smart, great defender, but he's not really his great. His three-point shot cut better? Yeah, but, I mean, historically, he's got not a great three-point shooter. <laughs> um, and I think that's one thing that they've kind of lost since Avery Bradley uh, you know, left was, yeah. was that ability to have a 3-and-D player. And I think Kelton Johnson can bring that, but can he be anything more than that? Not really. I think that's why he, he, he went down. I think at his peak potential, he showed that he might be something more than that. And that's why he was like at 10. And mm-hmm. we were like, well, maybe he can even take a, more, a larger step up if he's on a different team. Um, but I don't think that's really true now. I what happens if he goes back? Let's say that what the rumors say, he's not a guaranteed lottery pick. He goes back to Kentucky. What happens to Kelvin Johnson it's, it's, in your it mind? It helped P.J. Washington. Yeah. I mean, P.J. Washington was not a first-rounder in our mind last year, and he went back, and now he's a, now he's 12. I'm Which is board. weird for a Calipari school. Yeah. Usually yeah. they come out and they declare and they go. Mm-hmm. And they don't I, think about coming back. I think I think Keldon, it would definitely help him because um, he might get a larger role on that Kentucky team and show mm-hmm. what he tr- truly do. Because if he thinks he's a lottery pick and he's not getting that, I think that would be smart for him. Um, I don't think Gafford did that because I don't think Gafford said he wanted a lottery thing or anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, but I think it would be similar to that situation where Gafford was mocked in our lottery last year and then he pulled out. Um, or like an Ivan Rob. Uh, Rob did that and that didn't work out for him. 
Um, so it, it's definitely a risky pick, but it has shown out. P.J. Washington was one of those guys. Um, so I think that it would probably be in his best interest to go back. Um, yeah, but obviously you're always risking the the injury of uh, mm-hmm. you know, the, the possibility of injury. So um, if he does go back, I wouldn't blame him. I'll, I'll put it that way. I think he'll have actually a better cast potentially next year too. Mm-hmm. Recru- recruiting depending. Like I think that he could shine a little bit better. So I agree. He needs to work on his game. He needs to be more consistent with his scoring. He's not a bad player by any means, but I think that next year he could get himself into that uh, probably, you know, at least guarantee himself a lottery pick. Yeah, I think he just needs to show more of, a, of an ability to be a ball handler. Um, I think that's the one thing that I, I feel like he's kind of lacking his ability mm-hmm. to be a ball handler. And I think that's one thing that Jared Culver does provide. And he could be, you know, similar to Jared Culver, where you know Culver came in, he played great, he played great defense, uh, you know, was a great ball handler, um, and that's why he shot up. And Jared Culver was not in our first round last year, and that was because that was a, such a loaded draft. But he was not like in our, on our radar to be a, a first round pick in, in any sense of the way. And uh, I think that if if Kelton Johnson's able to go back and show that he can run an offense, you know, briefly, mm-hmm. um, show it every now and then in, in a couple games, I think that'd be huge for uh, for Kelton Stock. But uh, right now, I think I think on going back is definitely on the table for Kelton Johnson. I think it should be because I mean I'm even looking here and two of the big guys that Kentucky is looking to add next year is um, Maxi, who's the um, top recruit out of Texas, ninth overall. Yep, um, he's going to be combo guard. Going to be there, and then although he hasn't signed, it looks like Khalil um, Whitney, Whitney, no Whitney, um, the small forward on New Jersey, who is the seventh overall top position top in New Jersey. They're going to add them as well. Maybe might clash with Kelvin Johnson, but might not be the worst thing for him. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one. I think he could. Hurt, I think he could have a good combine though. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of those ones if he. He's athletic enough. I don't know if he has elite athleticism. Shoot some back up. Yeah, but the five on five could prove something out there. Yeah, and maybe maybe he does have just like a really great you know vertical leap, and maybe he does have a you know, yeah. great speed. Uh, maybe it was just something where he was just not showing it for some reason at Kentucky. Um, I mean, we've hit, again weird guys show up in mm-hmm. the combine. Yeah, so. for sure. Um, let's move now to uh, the Heat. Heat are an interesting team for me. I have Nikki Alexander Walker going. You both have Seku going. Um, why Seku to the Heat? Well, why do you guys like that pick? It's a perfect place for him to mold into like an uber athletic wing. Like that's that's my mind. He's already got like great wingspan, great size. If you get him down to being like a yoked up version of himself, that's yeah. exactly what you want because his shot will continue to grow. You've seen Miami develop shooters over time. I think that they're finding their way with using Justice as a point, which opens up the four because basically you've just got James Johnson or you're with a smaller lineup. Or the weird, like, Kelly O. Bam combo that they did towards mm-hmm. the end. Mm-hmm. I didn't really love all of those ideas, but I think that he could come in, not going to be an immediate impact player, but he's someone who will grow and is absolutely, like, he's got all the right tools. The question is, who's who can take him and p- develop him as a player? And Miami is th- one of my top well, teams for that. They can take the swing, because you think about it, without him, they were a fringe playoff team. So even if they add him and he's takes this year to kind of develop, I don't think it's going to hurt the Heat with what their goal is. Like this team with Seku in kind of like a very minor role could still be a team that challenges for the 6th, 7th, 8th spot in the East. Why not get a player like Nicky Alexander-Walker who can come in and help your team make the playoffs? The Seku question, might not. Nicky Al can. It's all about that ceiling. Like where do you see the ceiling for Walker compared to Demboya? And I feel point I feel like in some minds, like of course, there's always the kind of now everyone doesn't know what to think about international players because we all thought we knew what it was last year, and Luca just broke the glass ceiling. It was like, hey, but, but, dude, no, you're wrong. Yeah. Um. So now everyone's probably gonna overreact and go, oh, we can take it. Like, look what happened with Luca. Now everyone's gonna to, like kind of see. It's a oh, I get it. Everyone's not Luca. We will overcorrect. Back so and I forth. mean. Mm-hmm. It might be a little bit of that, but I just I think that the Heat are in a situation, <laughs> bless you, um, where they could take a guy like Seku and not have to worry if it takes him a year or two to kind of develop. And they've got a consistently solid coach of Spolster where I'm not expecting him to go anywhere anytime soon. No. I mean, unless they miss the playoffs again. But, I mean, he's not getting a ton of help. Mm-hmm. At least uh, uh, talent-wise, I think Pat Riley understands the situation. I think you've got to 
For me, I had Nikhil off the board already. Uh, mm-hmm. But for me, I'm if I'm the Heat, I'm swinging for the highest thing because you don't have that 2021 pick. That's true. So, and you're kind of loaded up on contracts. Like Deion Waiters is through 2020. Uh, Josh Richardson, you gave him that long term deal, great deal mm-hmm. potentially at you know nine mil, ten ten, and an eleven player op. Justice, you've got locked up. James Johnson's got a sixteen mil player op in 2020 still. Like, I'm not even gonna talk about the Hassan Whiteside coming up player option <laughs> yeah. shenanigans. Is, is he gonna leave for less money? Um, but like you're sort of in a position where you're stuck on a lot of these like middle contracts. And I think that they, if they want to make a change of pace, they can trade off some of those guys because they're valuable pieces. It's just for the money you're paying them, you're not going to get over the hump. Mm-hmm. So I think you go for the guy with a ton of upside in Seiku, where if he develops, you're absolutely just loving that pick and you're locked in with him, Justice, Josh, and that, and Bam, and that's your young core. Do you feel he has the most potential? Left on the board right now. Yes. Let me double check uh, and scroll down. Uh, Kevin Porter would be in that. Romeo Lankford would be in that conversation, I think. Hachimura would be in that conversation, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, Rui is the weird one Nasir. because he's older, but he didn't start playing basketball until recently. So I kind of, not everyone's Pascal Siakam, but I kind of have that hope in the back of my head now. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Pascal, for screwing <laughs> up my expectations. Uh, I think he's up there. I think he absolutely is. Yeah, I'll say he is. Everybody, everybody below Seiku Demboy on my board, minus Kevin Porter. I changed my mind. Kevin mm-hmm. Porter. Kevin Porter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but why why not Kevin Porter then? Going to the uh, they already have a, a fairly loaded like Dion Waiters plus ja, plus uh, Josh, Richardson. Josh Richardson. I think is their uh, two position pretty much locked up two three combo. So I'm good with that. I, I I like Kevin Porter, but I just he does not seem like someone who would get in line at. Uh, underneath the heat and their coaching staff and their front office. Mm-hmm. That would be my concern. Like, I could see him being like, oh, you're telling me I have to get in line or else? I'll choose or else. And they're like, enjoy the bench, kid. Yeah, let's talk about Nicky Alexander-Walker here. Uh, we we're going to talk about him uh, separately, but let's just do it because uh, he's he's on the heat right now, uh, mm-hmm. at least going to me. Um, I think he's a, a very <laughs> underrated player. I think people look at the point guards and I think he probably drops off after Kobe White. Um, don't sleep on him. He's 6'6", mm-hmm. uh, cousin of Shea. Um, Wouldn't it be great if they could have, if the Clippers could have gotten Nikhil and Shea to play together? It's too big though, you know. You got two Alexander Walkers on that team. That would have been great. No, because one's Gilgis. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, one's Gilgis Alexander, and the other one's Alexander Walker. Walker. Yeah. Um, still super awesome. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to see the cousins play together. Yep. Um, we saw it with Team Mac Vince, though it didn't work out. Um, <laughs> I just think that Alexander Walker is a guy that you you really shouldn't be sleeping on. I think people were overhyping Shea a little bit last year. Um, but he had a great year in the NBA. And I think oh, he that, did. I think that cements Nikhil. It's like, well, if he can well, do it. What I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to say is I think people were like, we, when people are like, oh, this guy's a sleeper. Yeah. You know, like Shea, Shea, Shea Gill just was the sleeper last year. He wasn't really a sleeper. No. Um, and I think people with Nikhil, they're kind of overlooking him a bit or maybe, you know, not paying enough attention to him where he is actually a sleeper. Mm. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, I don't think Shea was overrated. Um, but I think we were all confused by the Jerome Robinson pick more than yeah, anything. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. Um, that was a fucking <laughs> reach. Um, but yeah, I think looking at Alexander Walker, big guard, can play the one on the two, can shoot, can play defense, can do everything you need yeah. uh, from, from a guard. And I think he, he can be a guy who... With the Heat, where they do want to play kind of Swiss Army like with Winslow at the one, they'll obviously have Goron, they'll have waiters out there, they'll have a lot of different looks. Mm-hmm. Um, Nikki Alexander Walker just fits that mold. So, uh, you guys have him going to the Magic, uh, you, Ricky, you have him going to the Magic, and then uh, Dave, you have him going to the Hornets. Uh, why do you like those two teams? For me, it's just I've always looked for the Hornets in the last few mock drafts, I've had them go with more so the best two guard off the board, and for me, that's Alexander Walker. So it's like one of those things where, I mean, point guard could be. I mean, DJ Augustin playing out right now in a playoff game. He got him game. going to the Magic. Um, but, I mean, it's just like Evan Evan Fournier and Ter- Terrence Ross, your guys right now, is Terrence Ross going to get re-signed to me back next year? I can then have Nikhail Alexander and then have him under Fournier. And then if Fournier doesn't take his 17 mil or he's done after mm-hmm. 2021 with us, I can then segue Nikhil into our starting lineup. Yeah, and Dave, we wanted to talk about the Hornets in this one, so just jump it off with the Nikki Alexander Walker talk. Why does he fit with the Hornets? Uh, cause, cause y'all need a guard. Like, <laughs> you've got Tony Park, who's like basically 
old. 39 going into next year, I think. Are you 38. Sure, he's only like 60. He's old. Uh, I don't know if he'll actually play next year. He, he did pretty well uh, in limited minutes. Um, and then Devontae Grammar. Those those are two point guards under 37. contract. 37. All right. And then at the two, you've got Lamb, Monk, and using Dwayne Bank in there this year. I think that adding Walker adds a ton of versatility and gives you that uh-oh plan in case Kemba leaves. And you don't want to go out and free. Like, I would still suggest going in free agency looking for somebody, but I think Nikhail can soak a lot of minutes and is an absolute fantastic fit for this team because they've got some intriguing young prospects and they've been slowly rebuilding under the guise of terrible centers. So I'll be curious to see uh, his fit on that team. I think it could be really positive. Ricky, you have him going uh, with Romeo Langford. Why do you like that fit for the Hornets? I mean, for me, it's one of those things where at first I kind of wanted to. If Darius Garland would have slipped a little bit more, um, he would have been the pick there. Obviously, the Hornets are in a tricky situation at 12 because if you feel Kemba is not coming back, you might be sitting there going, man, I wish a point guard was here um, that we were able to kind of grab up. But, I mean, I'm just taking right there the best guard off the board. And for me, that's Romeo Lang. It was either Romeo Langford or Kevin Porter Jr., and I just I feel like I'm more confident in Romeo Langford because of what Dave said about Porter Jr. earlier in the year of like he's really good and then it's like oh wh- where'd he go like what in everything that's happened with Kevin Porter Jr. I don't know if he is going to be what we all think he can be or if it's just going to be he's a good NBA player or if it's the la- or if it's the very last option he's not anything close to where we think he can be. So it was just taking the best guard off the board, and that's Romeo. Yeah, I, I love Romeo. I hope he does well in the NBA. Um, I just wonder about his fit with the Hornets Ex- because they have Monk. I expected um, a little bit more out of him, though, out of Indiana. But, I mean, that's we've said that all year. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, though, is just like, I think it's a little bit weird of a fit because they do have some mm-hmm. two guards I think are intriguing, uh, especially Monk, just not getting the minutes out there. Um, well, has, he's, he's wild inconsistent. I mean, yeah. that kid... He needs more time, and that's someone. Well, that's who the I thing with so Romeo is like he's inconsistent, yeah. and he needs more time too. Yep. So you're having two two guards there that you know kind of play similar too. Yeah. Uh, both scoring. But Monk's guards, got so. a better three right now. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, great free throw shooter, eighty eight percent. Um, <coughs> but yeah, Romeo is a kid that I think he, he has star potential, uh, just like Monk did. But it's like, you know, would you want to double up in that in the past three years? Um, but hey, I, I think if you're think he's got the most potential, definitely go with him. Uh, I have him going PJ Washington. We t- mentioned him a little bit already. Um. I just absolutely love him. I think he's a, a a very good three, possibly even a stretch four. Um, and they don't really have that kind of maybe Marvin Williams uh, ask. Uh, Marvin Williams is like one of the best shooters from like the corner or something like that. Yeah, he's just he like forty six percent from uh, the corner. Um, and PJ Washington, I think, can be a guy that you know m- might fit more like a younger Marvin Williams. Um, both came from Blue Bloods. Marvin Williams was the second overall pick uh, back in two thousand six, but I think. Looking at PJ, he can put the ball on the floor. He can, you know, use his mid-range game a little bit. He is a good shooter from the outside. Uh, the foot might be a little bit of, uh, of a worry. Um, he had to miss some time in the NCAA tournament, but it wasn't like a break or anything like that, so that's not too bad. And he does play good defense. So I think the Hornets do need that. They don't really have a great three. We already talked about Batum and his bad contract. Uh, they need a 3-4 that really brings up that team. They don't have a center, which is definitely going to be something they need to address as well. What are you talking about? Um, You're saying Bismack Biombo, Cody Zeller, Hernan Gomez, Frank Kaminsky aren't a center? Hernan Gomez is interesting. Yeah. That's it. He's only 1.6 mil. Yeah, that's Bargain. it. Um, but uh, outside of that, I think P.J. Washington would be a really good fit on the Hornets. Um, but let us know what you want, uh, uh, Hornets fans out there. Let us know what yeah. you think uh, you need on this team, uh, especially yep. with the uh, whole campus situation. But let's move now to the Lakers. Uh, final team we're talking about. Uh, Ricky, you want to talk about Tyler? We want to talk about Tyler Hera, mm-hmm. uh, but you also want to talk about the Lakers in general. So let's start with the Lakers. Magic Johnson leaving uh, out of nowhere. Um, they fire the whole coaching staff. Luke Walton now going to be the Kings head coach. What should be the Lakers plan? going into this draft well for me the whole thing up until now is just oh we're gonna get free agents and go ahead and take a center and the thing i kept thinking was if you're taking a center here with the lakers are you really capitalizing off of what you could do for lebron james because if you go and get anthony davis you're going to give up some of that young core anyways 
Um, and for me, I just I sat there and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something different for the Lakers here at 11. Because, like, for both of you guys, Bull Bull and Jackson Hayes are off the board. Jackson Hayes was still on the board for me. But I'm like, screw it. They're not going to go with the center. I looked at Tyler Hero. I looked at Romeo Lankford. I looked at Kevin Porter Jr. Those were mainly the three guys. And I think I tagged um, Alexander Walker on the end of it as well. And I said, who gives me the best shot from beyond the arc? And I looked at the true shooting, the three-point, the just everything overall. And Tyler Hero would be the best position because it's like, you know what? Mm -hmm. We're going to add a guy who can be shooting, who can score. Is he going to do it right away day one? No. But if he takes a year... And then in year two with LeBron, can be that shooter <coughs> off the bench for them. I know that we were really high on um, Mikhail Luke in the summer league because of what he showed. I know that this season we kind of didn't talk about him after that. Didn't quite pan out for him. But I mean, Enjoy Tyler Detroit. Hero for me, like what I saw in the tournament, shooting. And that's what LeBron needs. He needs shooters around him. Why not draft a young shooter in Tyler Hero? You know what he needs more than shooters around him? Someone to trade away. Shooters. A pick to trade. I say Cam Reddish getting traded away. That that's exactly what I <laughs> Well that's what another thing happen. too is mm-hmm. Bobo. Bobo would have some intriguing trade value too. Yeah. Like I mean I don't that's, know exactly I mean, what he mo- would be, but yeah. I made it, the majority of my pick based around who has the most value left on the board. So someone's so trading and then taking him. Cam Reddish. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that you're taking Cam Reddish with the assumption that he will be traded at a later date for a player. So I don't know, that, that might be mean, but like that's just... I mean, I, it's honest, though. My assumption of the Lakers' plan moving forward mm-hmm. is probably not going to be using Cam Reddish uh, for themselves, but to get done what they need to get done. Yeah, I, I think that with the situation they're in, if they're going to go after Anthony Davis, they're going to need this pick. And hopefully, they're, for their sakes, they'll, they, they'll move up the lottery. Um, I don't know if that's exactly going to be something that's going to actually come to fruition, but... I think if you're looking for the Lakers, you just need someone. If you're using the pick and you're not getting Anthony Davis, mm-hmm. you need someone who's going to fit around LeBron James. Yep. And that's someone who can shoot. And Absolutely. that's Hero. That's um, Ball Ball. And that's hopefully Cam Reddish. And that, that's, all we, that's all we took. Cam Reddish is definitely going to be ha- having the highest trade value of that. Um, Hero probably the best uh, fit for him next to mm-hmm. a LeBron James player. And then Ball Ball, obviously a player that, if he pans out, would be something uh, definitely special. In LA, but all players that just try to fit around LeBron James and can be shooters from the outside, um, and that's really just the biggest thought about this. Mm-hmm. Also, DJ, uh, DJ Augustine just hit a three pointer, uh, three point four seconds left. No, no, no we're down to point five. We got oh, wow. it, and leave. the Magic yeah, got, got the bound. Wow! Uh, tried to pull it up, and uh, it's over. Playing it. It's over. It's uh, over. Two upsets. Magic uh, win, and the Nets win. So, over. is the Magic an upset really? Because I sort of talked about it a little bit. <laughs> it's an upset. Uh, <laughs> The lead back and just like, yeah, I was right. <laughs> That's going to do it for 11 through 20 if you guys don't have any other final thoughts. No, I'm good. I think we nailed it. All right.